Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimby Camper. Welcome to this week's episode. This week we're at McKinney Campground, which is a Corps of Engineers campground, a COE, on Lake Alatoona here. It's just north of Atlanta in Ackworth, Georgia. It's, Atlanta's about 30 miles down the road. So this is a good place to stay if you're going to uh, go explore Atlanta and all they have to offer. I would, however, caution you to watch what time you drive down there because if you're gonna pick like rush hour to go to Atlanta from here, you're, uh, you're gonna regret that immensely. Anybody that's ever went through Atlanta knows that. Now this is a Corps of Engineers campground and the Corps of Engineers campgrounds I like, they're actually my favorite. And there's a few different reasons for that. Number one is a lot of them are on the water. The second reason would be that a lot of the sites are more private, they're more spaced out, they have larger sites. Another reason for me is that they do accept the intra-agency pass. So if you do have a senior pass or an access pass, you get 50% off at COE campgrounds. And they're not that much money to start with. Full price is like $30 a night right here on the lake. They do have electric and water. They don't have any sewer. They were closed last year here, which this is, uh, seems to be a lot of people's number one pick around the Alatoona Lake. And I think it's gonna be mine too so far, but they were closed last year. And I thought it was because they were installing sewer in the sites, but I guess I was wrong because I still never saw any sites with sewer. Now, one thing about that intra-agency pass, you need to be sure you keep up with the card. I have misplaced my card somewhere. And this is one of those campgrounds that even though I was able to register and pay with my discount, they did charge me the remaining, uh, the discounted fee because I didn't have my card. So I had to pay that back. So that doubled the price of my weekend this weekend. It just kind of added to, to the week that I've had. But that all happens from time to time, right? One thing that I'll say about staying here is Aquar just a couple of miles down the road and it has all the restaurants, all that kind of stuff that you would expect in a suburb of Atlanta. And you just really wouldn't expect that being so close, being out here feeling like you're so secluded. And then, like I say, Atlanta is about 30 miles down the interstate, so it takes 30, 45 minutes to get there if you go at a point in time where the interstate traffic's not going to be an issue. All right, and then we'll get to internet speeds here. On Verizon, we got 35.35 download and 1.52 upload. You know, I would expect you to have pretty good signal here no matter what your carrier is, just because we're so close to Atlanta. It is 4G. I don't have 5G here. But my first net for the second time since I've had it has come in second place. My download speed on first net was 15 and my upload was five. So the upload was better than the Verizon, but Verizon won this one. All right, so let's talk about the campground itself. So in this campground, this is like I say, COE. And I talk about the waterfront sites. There's a lot of waterfront sites through here. And the sites that aren't on the water, a lot of them are still nice sites. And you know, we'll talk about our preferred sites a little while later, but I want you to remember that a lot of this is like split in hairs and it's just where I would choose to come back to. And that's not necessarily where everybody's gonna pick. There are 150 sites here in this campground, but you wouldn't expect it because there's not very many that are very close to each other. I have my front side of my camper pointed right at this. This is a pull through site. The pull through's not that great because it does kind of go down and then it flattens out and then goes back up and it's a little bit sharper than what you would want if you had a big bus or something like that. But it's a nice site. And so a lot of these sites are just like this. Some of them you back in right next to the water where your, your uh, tail end is right at the water, but you still have a lot of space. You have a lot of shade at a lot of these sites. And a lot of the ones that aren't on the water, you still have a lot of space at your sites. You have a lot of shade and you're not right on top of each other still. The biggest negative to any of the sites that are here is going to be the levelness. And that just happens whenever you're trying to build a campground in an area like this that's kind of hilly. So a lot of the sites here may not be good for like 30, 40 foot rigs, but they would be great if you had a pop-up or something like that that's short. Now on a lot of these water sites, there is a little bit of elevation down to the water. And whenever there is that, like our site has some stairs that go down um, to, to take most of that slope out and then you just walk over to the water. I will say that at the beginning of the campground in the first loop over there, it might look on the map like those are waterfront and technically some of those are, but they're gonna be 
probably the highest from the water of anywhere in the campground. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're wanting to go somewhere like this where you can go down here and you can fish or you can swim or anything like that, even if you want to bring your boat, they have a boat ramp here. You can take the boat, put it down the boat ramp. And then I saw a couple of people just drive their boat right up and just anchor it right in front of their campsite. There are multiple bathrooms here. I think that's an area where they probably did some upgrades last year when they were closed. The bathrooms are also clean and nice, have showers, everything you expect from a COE. Now, one thing I was really impressed with is they have a couple of different beach areas here where you can swim, but one of them in particularly, you kind of had to park and kind of walk down to the, the swim area of the beach. But on that upper area where you started walking down, there was a new playground and it looked like kids would have a lot of fun there and it kind of overlooks the lake in the swim area there. So it'd be really good fun for a family. All right, guys, so let's talk about our preferred sites here. Like I say, I think this is gonna be my number one pick for the campground around Alatoona Lake for now. Now, a lot of these preferred sites are going to be split in hairs. It's gonna be somewhere that I would personally wanna take like a 30 foot camp or two. So number one in my preferences here is gonna be water, waterfront because me personally, if I'm coming here, and I have the choice, I'm gonna choose a waterfront site. So those are gonna take priority over some of the other sites that I also have on my list. The second thing that it's gonna be is how level the site is. Some of the sites here aren't that level. Like the actual camping site might be level, but it might only be level enough for like a pop-up or something like that. And then you're gonna have an incline coming up out of the camping area. So with those, I'm gonna have a special little section for that. I'm gonna choose more on where a 30 foot rig would be level and you would be waterfront in camping and having fun. That's where I'm gonna put it the highest priority on my list. Now I have seen a couple of larger buses in here. That can be an issue that I wouldn't say this is necessarily big rig friendly, but there are some places that you could definitely make work. I will also point out that the back of the campground, which I'll say is uh, above site 57, there's kind of a split and you go around the water a little bit. That does seem to have more hills and stuff back there and might run into more level issues and stuff like that. Also, I would caution you just on general pull through sites, really anywhere is a lot of times just because it says pull through doesn't mean that it's going to be easy and pull through. Some of them do have a little bit of incline. Some of them, the, the pull through is actually a pretty sharp curve that you got to be careful of. And I'll try to point a couple of those out for you. And there's a couple of smaller loops, like the loop from 83 to I think 101. It's a smaller loop. You might have trouble getting a large camper in and around that area, as well as there's one little road that goes off of it with two or three campsites that you definitely need to be careful with because there's a little turnaround area back there, but you couldn't turn a trailer around there. And so I think that if you had a trailer over like 10, 15 feet, you would probably have to back down that whole side road there. So you wanna be careful of that. I wanna say on the record right here that I don't think that any site here is horrible. I have some cautionary tales about a couple of them. If you have something short like a pop-up, a camper van, or your tent camping, almost any site here is gonna be great for your needs. All right, so let's get on to the preferred sites. My favorite site, site 36. It was just a lot of space there. There was a lot of shade, a lot of privacy, and you're right on the water. It was just a great site. Then would be site 34, which is a pull through site, but I want you to be warned that the last part of the pull through is very sharp, but you should be able to fit most rigs in there. And it's going to be a short walk to the water, but it's a great site. 34 is also right next to the beach area. And so it's going to be real close there if you and the kids want to go down and swim. Site 55 is a very large pull through site with tons of shade and tons of privacy. It's still waterfront, but there is a little bit of a slope there and a short walk to the water. Site 48 is where we were. It was very nice. It is a pull through site. There is a little bit of incline coming in and going out of the site, but it's not bad. Our 29 to 30 foot trailer is very comfortable here. One issue that we thought we may have is that my driver's side slide might have interfered with the utilities, but 
where we were parked, uh, which was right in the middle of the pavement, we still had probably a good foot in between the uh, electrical pole and our slide. 49 is a nice back end sight. 35. 26. 50, and I want to say that it's a back end sight with a level area to park at the camper, but there is a decent slope up to the road. 86 is a huge, wonderful side on the peninsula, but I will caution you that the main picnic area is gonna be a few steps down from the campsite, but it was a huge site. It's probably, you know, square footage wise, gonna be the biggest site that you have on the lake. And it was a really nice site, as long as you didn't mind those stairs in between your trailer and the campsite. That being said, the picnic area down there, it was like right on the water. There's not a lot of elevation to change to go to to go from that to the water. Sites 87 through 89 are also on that same peninsula. These are very long back end sites. There may be some issues with the slope here. However, I think that you could fit a decent sized camper in all three of these sites very easily. But after you get out of the camping site and you start going toward the road, there is a decent incline on some of these sites. 39 is another huge pull through site, but be careful because the curve of the pull through is rather sharp and there are a few trees and obstacles around the area. A couple of more to add on for short campers that you may want to look at would be sites 51 and 8. Now these next sites that we talk about aren't going to be waterfront sites, but they're still great sites. If you're not coming to be like right at the water, these sites will serve you very well. 77, 10, 70, 19, 58, 64, 67, 76, 16, 4, I want to say that site four is one of the largest sites and it is a pull through which has a level area for a large camper but after the camping area like in front of your camper where you would park it there is a pretty good slope coming down back to the main road also site seven and then there are just a few sites here that i would personally avoid and those are going to be 52 54 which would be okay if you had a smaller camper. It's just kind of laid out wonky. There's a like a little pull through area, but then the actual site's a back end site off of the pull through area, if that makes any sense at all. And then I would probably avoid 20 and 21 just because of the incline down to the camper. So just take that for what it's worth. All right, guys, so we're here at McKinney. We're gonna be pulling out tomorrow. It wasn't the best weather. It was cloudy most of the time. Got a little bit of rain on Friday night, but I would definitely say it was better being cloudy than being hot and crazy and sweaty and yucky. But, you know, that weather's coming. So by the time this comes out, it's probably gonna be in the middle of summer. It's gonna be like that. But stick around for next week's adventure with us and we hope to see you again. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.